Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. I know my audience has been asking for a cubic equation for some time and I promised that I was going to do a cubic equation. All right, let's go ahead and solve this problem. I'm going to be presenting two methods. And should we start with the first one? Let's start with the first one. Well, some people claim that if you uh, use the second method first, then it becomes the first method, right? All right, great. Anyways, this is the first method. I want you to notice something here. Notice that, maybe you already did, 7 plus 6 is equal to 12 plus 1. Well, we already knew that. Yes, but it has an important meaning. 7 plus 6 is equal to 12 plus 1. What is that supposed to tell you in terms of the coefficients of this cubic equation? And if you said, the sum of the even coefficients equals the sum of the odd coefficients, you got it right. That is the fact. And what is that supposed to mean? Well, it just means that if sum of the odds is equal to the sum of the evens, that means x equals negative 1 is a solution. Obviously, you could find this by guess and check uh, by using the rational root theorem. Uh, it's not that easy. Why 1 seventh is a candidate too, but obviously it's not going to work. 1 over 1, 1 over negative 1, so on and so forth. You could go through that using the rational root theorem as well. Fine. But I think this is a good strategy. Uh, you should always, always check the sum of the coefficients and the sum of the evens and sum of the odds separately so that you can identify a possible root. Great. So now, since we know that x equals negative 1 is a solution, we can actually uh, reduce the power here and turn it into... Uh, a linear times a quadratic. Let's go ahead and do it. And for that one, I also have another trick that I shared with you in many other videos. So, I know it's not a cube. Okay, fine. 7x cubed. Now, I'm going to start off with this and I want to get x plus uh, x equals negative 1. That indicates that I should have x plus 1 as one of the factors. But how is that possible? How can I get that from 7x cubed? Well, if you think about it, um, multiply x plus 1 by 7x squared, you're going to get 7x cubed plus 7x squared. That kind of tells you, I'm giving you a little bit de more detail on my technique, by the way. Uh, that means that you do need 7x squared next to 7x cubed. But I do have 12x squared, but no worries. I can split it up. I have 7x squared, now I have 5x squared left. So everything is good. Everyone is happy, right? That is followed by 6x. I don't want 6x. I want 5x squared to be followed by 5x. That way, x plus 1 is always going to be a factor. Great. But I have 6x. No worries. I can write the leftover. And then it's just going to match up nicely with the constant 1. And we are all done. Well, almost. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. I can take out x squared. And that is going to be, oopsies. That's supposed to be 7x squared. What are you doing? Okay, 7x squared, and that gives me x plus 1. I don't edit these, so you guys get to see my thinking process, so I make mistakes, obviously. Okay, uh, x plus 1. Some people don't like that, like the fact that I make mistakes. I'm like, how silly those are. Anyways, I do make mistakes. x plus 1 is a factor, so let's take it out. And then, what happens afterwards, right? We get the quadratic. Nice. This is really cool. I really like this method. I don't know how I learned it or someone else taught it to me or I discovered it on my own, but it's a really nice alternative to long division and uh, synthetic division uh, because they're kind of long, right? It's the same thing. You're doing the same thing without doing it. So anyways, so we get this and what are we going to do with this? We're going to solve this equation. Obviously, you do know, I hopefully, right, by now, that x equals negative 1 is a possible solution. Not, not a possible, it's a, it is a solution. How about the quadratic? We can solve it using the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula tells us that x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 25, minus 4ac, 4 times 7 is 20. What am I writing for? Okay, 4 times 7 is 28, minus 28. Uh oh, we got a negative answer divided by 2a, which is 14. Awesome. Not so awesome because we got a negative answer, but I know some folks who like complex numbers will like this because the roots are going to be complex. Yay. So, 25 minus 28 is negative 3, so that gives me negative 5 plus minus square root of 3 multiplied by the i, which is the imaginary square root of negative 1, whatever. So this is the other two roots. Therefore, we do have three solutions because this is 
a cubic, right? Okay, some theorem in algebra says that if you have a cubic, you have to have three solutions, three complex solutions. Is x equals negative one a real solution? Yes. Is it a complex solution? Yes, because you can write it as negative one plus zero. I know some people say like, hey, this is also complex. Okay, fine. All right, it is complex too. So now that brings us to the end of the first method. Let's go ahead and proceed with the second method. All right, hopefully we'll get the same answer, right? We should be. So my second method is very different. Yay. Okay, awesome. So let me rewrite the equation so you can see 7x cubed plus 12x squared. I think some of you guys have already thought about this method. I'm pretty sure you thought of it because you guys are so good and very mathematical. Anyways, uh, when you look at this number, ignore the 7x cubed, but look at the 12 and the 6 and the 1. Does that ring a bell? Well, it should. This should remind you that we're dealing with the binomial theorem. Okay, to be more precise, I'm talking about something cubed here, right? And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add x cubed to both sides. You'll see why I'm doing this in a little bit. When I add x cubed to both sides, basically I'm going to be getting 8x cubed plus 12x squared. Do you see what I see? Hopefully. And that's going to equal x cubed. But look at the left-hand side, 8, 12, 6, and 1. Those numbers are super duper special, yes. And those are going to be the coefficients. And this expression can be written as 2x plus 1 quantity cubed. And that is equal to x cubed. Yay, let's can cancel out the cubes. 2x plus 1 equals x. And from here, x equals negative 1. Awesome. Is that it? No. You should, well, you can do it, but that's not the end of it. Because remember, the first method, if you've seen it, uh, we have more solutions. So how do we find those, or how do we not lose any solutions? We don't cancel out anything. We don't cube root both sides. Here's what we're going to do. Always be in the habit of, you know, if you have an equation like something equals something, always put everything on the same side. Don't cancel anything out, because you're going to lose roots, probably. And then set it equal to zero, and then solve it. Yes, that's what we're going to do here. All right, so I'm going to be subtracting x cubed, and guess what? This is difference of two cubes, yay! I can factor it as a minus b, and then a squared plus ab, which is x times 2x plus 1, plus b squared. And set it equal to 0, and guess, you guessed it right, one of the factors is going to be x plus 1, and when you simplify the other factor, it's going to be the same thing, and this is going to give you the exact same roots as the first method. Make sense? It's going to be exactly the same thing. So let's rewrite one more time. X is going to be negative 1. Or X is going to be negative 5 plus minus square root of 3i divided by 14. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and hasta la vista.